you remember a time when you actually remembered your mobile phone number, or perhaps your partner's mobile phone number? Do you remember a time when you could follow more than two simple directions on how to get somewhere? It's a distant memory for me too. The reason being is we're doing something called cognitive offloading. It's where we're literally handing over some of our memory making tools to technology and it is definitely changing the way our brains are being wired. My name is Dr. Christy Goodwin and I'm a children's brain and technology expert and in this video I want to talk to you about something called digital dementia. Is technology really changing our memory skills or are we just in a moral state of panic because technology is something new? Well, scientists in South Korea have identified a phenomenon called digital dementia. Scientists by the name of Manfred Spitzer coined the term digital dementia back in 2012. And it describes a phenomenon where we're literally offloading some of our memory making capacity to technology. The fancy word for it is cognitive offloading where we're literally handing over some of our memory making skills to technology. And this can be both helpful and harmful. On one side of the coin, we have the positive potential. If we're freeing off some of our freeing up, sorry, some of our lower order thinking skills, so the, the little menial bits of information that we don't really need to know automatically, it can free up our brains to engage in the higher order thinking skills where we're applying and evaluating and analysing. So it can have a positive potential. But there's a part of me that still feels that we do need to commit some things to rote, rote learning. We do need to be able to recall some pieces of information, facts and details instantaneously. What happens when our smartphone battery goes flat or the internet is down for the day? We need to be able to retrieve information as we go so that we can have meaningful conversations. We don't want to be constantly pulling out our smartphone to retrieve a fact. But this phenomenon of digital dementia is happening everywhere. It's not just adults, but it's children. So much so these days that we've got a phenomenon where Google has become part of our vernacular. Children today don't know information and they suggest that we just Google it. So kids today are recognizing that we don't need to commit things to memory or we don't need to be able to instantaneously, sorry, that they want to instantaneously retrieve information, but we're not committing things to our memory. And that's really important. The neuroscience has told us for a long time that the neural pathways that we use repeatedly get strengthened. Those that don't, don't. They literally get pruned away. And so it's really important that if we want to develop that memory making capacity, like any muscle, that we strengthen it. We need opportunities to practice memorizing and recalling information. So I'm going to share six tips with you that I think can help us build our memory making skills in this digital age. The first tip is not to always do a Google search, do an organic search. What can you recall from your, your memory? What meaning can you make from the facts that you've got stored? Tip number two is to read real books. It really helps with our memory recall. Yes, ebooks can be convenient, but we know that different thinking processes occur when we read a real book. It really can help improve our recall. Number three is such a simple tip, but so important and often overlooked in this digital age, and that is get physical at the onset of conditions like dementia. So phys being physically active is really important to prevent memory loss. Number four is limit your time with screens. I know I often talk about having a balanced approach to technology, but it's so important that we don't overuse it. The scientists from South Korea where they're exploring this concept of digital dementia have found so far that overuse is one of the key predictors that um, our technology habits will impact on our memory skills. Number five is a fun one and that is learn a new language or learn a musical instrument. Children and adults both benefit from learning um, a new language or an instrument. There's no denying that children will find it much easier than adults will, basically because their neural pathways are still being formed, it's much more of an easier process for them. But still no excuse for us to go and try something new. It really does build our memory skills. And number six is to really experience the moment firsthand. Too often we're um, experiencing the moment secondhand via our screen. Susan Pierce from Mind Gardener talks about a phenomenon called FOM, fear of making a memory. Too often we're not actually committing the memory to our own personal hard drive, instead we're relying on our phones to make meaning from the event. 
no screen will ever authentically capture the rich experience that we truly experience when we're present in the moment. So it's so important that we don't always rely on our phone to capture important memories, that we actually commit them to our own personal hard drive. If you found this video helpful, check out my website, everychancetolearn.com.au, where you'll find more tips, tricks and tools about raising children in the digital age. If you're interested in me speaking to your parent or your teacher community, please feel free to reach out to my team. I speak at schools, preschools, community groups, church groups, health organisations and local councils um, and conferences all about how technology is rewiring our brain and how we can use it in healthy and helpful ways and minimise any potential harmful effects. Thank you. Mm -hmm.